you know, inks or something. It's my excuse. Okay, whoa, hello everybody. We are live here. Another Google Hangout with my man, my homeboy, Jason Kuhn. No worse from the wear, Eric Danis. And by that I mean he's a little hung over today. Yeah. If I was hungover, I probably wouldn't be here. So let's first just talk talk us through a little bit about what kind of shenanigans went down last night. Um, I actually was in a really good mood when I busted the main, which isn't typical, but um, maybe it is typical. I don't know. No, I'm, it's not. Okay, well, <laughs> I was really happy with the way I played. And uh, am I looking at you or am I looking at them? Oh, the combo? yeah. And now this madness. Yeah, um, what is this? It's not time for break yet. The so daily, the daily deep stack, ruining, oh. ruining everything as well. Yes, and they're, and everyone's gonna need an autograph now. But they'll hear us if we yell really loud into this. Okay. Um. Yeah. So, it's in a good mood, and I was with my buddy Heraldus. Um, oh, many things have been going on with him as of recent. He's the man. Yeah. Uh, he's like I'm the biggest Heraldus fan. Yeah. But uh. Yeah, we were just like, let's get a couple of drinks, uh, and a few other of my friends, uh, we ended up at Surrender somehow. I'm not a big nightclub guy, but it was fun, and uh, I just, if I drink two two drinks anymore, I'm like hammered drunk. But uh, I'm hungover because I had two slices of pizza. I haven't had pizza in like two months, so I That's feel really shame. bad about that. Yeah. Now, I would say that the start to any good story is we decided to go out and have a couple drinks. Yes. However... You just came off of, now tell me the word that it is again. There's a ketosis? word. Ketosis? Yes. You just came off of ketosis. So this is probably not optimal for your yeah. body, but tell for those who don't know what ketosis is, okay. give us yeah. a Okay, Honestly, uh, I was attempting it. Um, my good friend David Benefield was the guy that kind of got me into it, and he was all out ketosis for like four weeks maybe, which is pretty insane. It's basically... Um, Rather than uh, your body using glucose as, as its main energy source, you kind of cut all of your carbohydrates and start using fat as your primary energy source. And your body produces these like survival mechanisms. Um, and I'm no expert, but it's basically like uh, when your body's starved of carbohydrates, it goes into like, okay, I need to keep you alive somehow. So we're going to use fat now, and then eventually once you get through the fat, you would use muscle, and then you would starve to death and die or whatever. But we don't take it that far, just to the fat. And you have to be careful because for exactly this reason, some people take it too far. Exactly. And you, yeah. you, you don't want to lose muscle yeah, if you're yeah. working hard. Of course, yeah. But your body produces these things called ketones, which is like it's a reserve system for energy. And if you can get to the point where you're producing ketones, and I, I don't think I was ever in ketosis. I was... Uh, Mainly, I was still keeping some carbohydrates in my diet, but I was using mainly fat and protein as my energy source, and I felt great all series. And where did that fat come from? Um, well, just wondering. Well, uh, <laughs> I have actually a really, really high fat diet. Um, lots of this typical stuff: your uh, your fatty fish, the oh, yeah, that's like just... salmon, and it's a lot of fat. Um, and, Those and fatty fish just kill your avocados me. and uh, and then once in a while just like hot that, wings a nut? And, yeah yeah those the typical <laughs> stuff shoes. yeah <laughs> so but uh, I'll tell you what I'll give this guy a plug David got me on this guy Ben Greenfield so he does these podcasts uh, if you want to learn anything about ketosis or training for an Ironman or if marijuana is bad for you I saw that was one of his podcasts. He's uh he gets the world's best health experts on his podcast and they're free. It's uh BenGreenfieldFitness.com. What's the verdict on the marijuana front? Uh it seems to be quite good for you actually. Sounds uh, good. Yeah. Sign yeah. me up. Yeah. I like this guy so far. <laughs> yeah. And so David Benefield, okay, I don't know that much about him, but I've never I never knew him to be a fitness buff. We talked earlier this year about the basketball playing the beat. Evolve with David. Yeah. Is he also kind of on this this uber fitnessy train, or he's just yeah. into kind of more obscure, weird, random things? Well, he's an absolute freak when it comes to uh, basically anything. He's the most well versed person I've ever met in my entire life. He's like highly educated, and he's re just really, really motivated. Everything that he does, he wants to know more about it than anyone else. So. Uh, if it comes to nutrition, or I mean, he knows he can speak Mandarin now. He speaks Chinese. It's like, gross, whatever it is, he's all in. He's, yeah, he's all about it. So um, whenever he brings all these good points to the table, I'm just like, okay, I'll be the guinea pig. I'll try it out because I'm 
kind of like uh, raw athletic talent, and he's got all the brains. So I listen, and we, we uh, work well together. And you got, well, actually, what am I doing? I'm in the sandwich, so I'm cutting Eric out. <laughs> yeah. Get in here, Eric. Get let's, in here. Let's stay in the vein of the health. Uh, okay, injuries. sure. Uh, Steve on Twitter wants to know, uh, how do you prepare for a long Sunday on the virtual health? Because that can be a uh, Yeah, that's really, really brutal. Um, I think online grind is harder on you than live poker. Um, you're making more decisions quicker, uh, like playing 15, 16 tables. Um, and yeah, you're stuck to your chair all day. You know, you don't get your 90 minute dinner break like you do in live poker. So five minute breaks aren't really enough to kind of get reset. So I definitely have all my meals and snacks pre-cooked. I do that, uh, I used to do it all myself. And then uh, uh, me and my roommate Ben Hollerine got a personal assistant and we just tell her what we want when we want it. Um, but I don't overeat whenever I play. Uh, just kind of snack throughout the day, which um, there's tons of different arguments for what you want to do. You could eat like a large meal in the morning and then just kind of starve it out all day and it would maybe do the same thing for you. But uh, I personally pre-cook all my meals, do lots of snacks, lots of caffeine, which probably isn't the best, but I, I probably go through four to five cups of coffee a day. Yeah, whenever I, on a Sunday, I mean, on an average, I'm probably two to three cups. Um, so do that. Lots of the high fat, healthy foods. Uh, whenever I'm on break, I we have a really beautiful view. So I go and I sit down and I, I have like a foam roller and I'll just roll on my foam roller and look out at the pretty sky and watch like the seagulls and stuff fly by and just try not to think about poker for three or four minutes, close my eyes, take deep breaths, and then just get back in there. And I just want to constantly like remind myself like uh, Online poker can be extremely tilting. It can be not only in a negative way, but like you can have an hour, and it happens basically every Sunday where you have an hour where you're like God mode. You're right. just chip lead of like six tournaments. Right. You're like, oh my God, today's going to be an amazing day. And then you go back in, and maybe the next hour you just get wiped out in all of those. So you want to, on those five minute breaks, reset yourself from tilt, like from the positive side and the negative side. So like if you have a bunch of stacks, just be like, okay, this is tournament poker. I'm going to make good decisions. I'm in a really good spot, but. Who knows what's going to happen? Don't like let your expectations build, and then your whole day be ruined because the next hour. So uh, just reset your brain and try to stay even keeled. Okay, we've got a couple of things coming in here. Let's start with the first guy, Jason. Big fan. I've noticed you seem to be buds with Ben Tolleran. Hey, through Three Bet Clothing, I assume, or maybe that came after. Are you two involved with Phil Galfon and run it once at all? Thanks in advance. And I know you were just with Phil Galfon doing a Q and A. Yeah. That's um, yeah, I know, I've known Phil slightly longer than I've known Ben, but Ben's actually one of my best friends. Uh, I've lived with him for over two and a half years. We met, uh, I actually introduced him to 3Bet. So, and I introduced the 3Bet guys to Ben. They loved him. They signed him. Um, but Ben is uh, probably, I don't think I really have role models, but if I do, he would be the guy I would say is my role model. Um, he's the hardest working person I've ever met in my life. He's uh, very self-aware. He understands his weaknesses. And uh, it's like um, everyone knows Ben's maybe the best player in the world, uh, arguably. But he's always in his mind. It's like there's no ego. He he feels like everybody at the table he's with has their strengths, and and he's just focused on what he can do to to, to beat them. It's really an amazing thing. So for Ben, um, known him, yeah, like I said, I've lived with him for over two and a half years. Uh, we spend, I mean, we're like a couple. <laughs> and didn't you take Phil Galfon from like kind of chubby poker player nah. boy into like kind of mm. handsome stud muffin guy? No, I do appreciate all the credit everyone gives me. Like they gave you that hey, credit. Come? Yeah, every What's time. Up? Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt you guys. Jump up in here. This is all American Dave. Well, there's a little something there. Ah. Just saying. <laughs> this guy's got. Ah, we were just talking well. about those. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Let me Man, see here. Uh, it's post, post it's pretty series. Close. Yeah, I'm pretty close. This guy's series. Beast. I don't know. He's hung uh, over, but I don't know. Still Look at that. Um, I get out of here. Hey, well, I thought we were, let's do a little. Let's do that competition we were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Get so out of here. Here. I'm we're tired of losing at things. All <laughs> summer, all summer, I've been losing. But yeah, I'm so we're losing. sad to hear that. Yeah, you busted, man. It's okay. But I, I, I feel your pain for the first time ever. You know, so I busted this year too. Oh, you played the main. I played the main. I busted in a bad way. And I tried to come get All-American Dave so that I could do a push-up competition with him. Oh, yeah? 
Uh, yeah, but someone already had scooped him, but maybe Jason could take my place in this uh, competition and uh, we could see what, what kind of push ups. Are uh, we going to be here uh, all night, though, if we do that? <laughs> Don't do this to me right now. Oh, you gotta send back. Oh, you gotta whip, let me win by like three. Okay, okay. by three? Yeah, yeah. Right. Good. Let's Sounds just good. try to do at talk. least 25. Yeah. First to 50. Oh my First god. First to 50. 25 is. Listen, that's for, for a guy play. like this, it's nothing at yeah. all. We really should be first to we, we gotta get triple digits. Yeah. yeah, we can't be doing that. 25. You know. We are gonna um, be. I'll, I'm gonna go get a glass of wine. I'll be back when they're yeah. done, guys. <laughs> see you guys. In a yeah. gotta get in here. All right, let's see it. it. Let's see it, boys. Oh no, what are we doing? Yeah, I'll jump in after you're at seven. I am absolutely. I drank last night, man. I'll do like. Uh, don't really have to do push-ups right now. This wasn't enough. Let's do first to fifty. We'll just first to, How about we just both do fifty and then? With me I don't. On your okay, back. we'll do perfectly formed, paced fifty. Oh up. god. Yes. This is ridiculous. I'm like free balling right now too. My butt's gonna be hanging out of <laughs> these. That's a lot of information for everyone. <laughs> Poor guy. This is what we do. Don't go on this show if you're hungover unless you're planning so on bringing stupid. in a drink. This is what people Look at this guy. This yeah. guy's complaining no, about it. He's Let's got pipes it. like this. Let's see it. All right, so All we're right. just doing 50? Let's just do 50. Maybe All you guys right. can give us the details on like what right. a perfectly formed push-up is. All right. All right. Ready? Okay. Oh, my God. Four. Five. Six. Mama's uh, thirsty. Eight. Eight. Nine. Ten. Bench press is almost 400 pounds. He's lighter than me. This is killing me because I actually don't know who this person is. He's like the world's greatest poker player. Yeah, like how do I not know who this is? Yeah, he's, Where uh, has he been all my life? He just, plays on, he just plays on the internet. Oh, that's why. I'm, yeah. I can't be playing on the internet. Yeah, okay. Okay, you have to talk about this Kenny Tran thing. I don't know. Uh, I didn't... Uh, Caca! Yeah, I... I just checking. I, I, I haven't heard of the hand. After I bust a tournament, I usually don't look at anything uh, related to that tournament. Yeah, I am actually not clear on what this hand ev I'm is either. Yeah, I'm sorry, but it sounds like uh, they were both bluffing and somebody six bet and showed a deuce of clubs. Uh oh. Someone keeps saying there's no sound, but it looks like there's sound on this. You see when it goes green? Someone just thinks there's no sound. Nope. You guys lost audio. No sound. No sound, guys. No sound. Fix. Whoa. Help. Just joined Are we good? in. Uh, right after the push-ups, we lost audio. Blame that on Dave. I had, I had good? No, no deal with that. Someone give me a thumbs up. Oh, I can't see anyone else. Oh, okay, we're good. Okay, so I won't, I won't take too much more of your life, but I want to. I actually think this is an interesting uh, question no, that we've asked a lot of players. Um, what would you be doing if you weren't playing poker? Uh, well, that's a good question. Uh, I think, I think most of us are. Uh, always considering that like What's pokers nice? yeah like uh, for most of us I think it's like a vessel to somewhere else you know and for me um, 
I think eventually where I want to be is I want to – I love kids. Uh, I was kind of uh, in a bad spot as a kid, so I have empathy for other kids in bad spots, and I want to kind of look after them. So I want to make a push for uh, emotional intelligence being taught in schools at a very young age. So I'm sure that there's a lot of other uh, – like Miranda Forster, Vanessa Selp's wife. Yep was talking to me about this the other night at dinner, and she works in a program similar. But I, I think, like, schools kind of, at least public schools, I was publicly schooled, teach you how, like, they give you a bunch of input, and then you're just supposed to regurgitate it on a test, and you're supposedly, like, you, you learn things that way. And I don't think that that's the best way to teach kids. I think, uh, one, we need to learn, like, at a young age why we feel the way that we feel. And I think that would help kids, like, avoid bullying each other and hand cope with hard situations better and just kind of get to know themselves better. So uh, eventually I would like to just kind of start maybe seminars or fund fund people that know a lot more about it than I do and like help them teach kids to, yeah, just get to know themselves better to, at an early age. Well, and I think there's a big movement right now, at least in the United States, towards homeschooling and com community homeschooling instead of this public education system, not only for this not teaching kids emotional intelligence, but also more or less teaching them to be slaves and not think for themselves mm -hmm. and not learning how to, you know, adapt to creative, creatively solving problems and things like this. So I am all for that. And I think if we had leaders in the community who were able to say, teach a seminar on this, teach a yeah. class, as a community, we could hopefully raise better children. That's what I'm saying. At least give them a better chance, you know? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yes, uh, quickly here, uh, how did you get your start in the uh, game of poker? Um, in a nutshell, I was a collegiate sprinter. I got hurt, was bored. I started playing poker with the football team, realized I had a natural aptitude for it, bought a bunch of books, joined Card Runners back whenever it was like an HTML site. I'm talking like... <laughs> It was the ugliest thing you've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. And uh, like I said, I was dirt poor. And the next thing I know, I'd, I I think I won forty or fifty thousand my last year of college. And I was like, wow, this is sick. And I like blew it all in a car and like taking my buddies to Vegas and Hawaii. And but uh, yeah, I just fell in love with it. Those were fun times, though. The best. Yeah. This is the question of the hour, which I ask everyone too, but apparently other people want to know. What are your thoughts on Dan Coleman declining media? Well. I've known Dan for quite a while. He is a heads-up, sit-and-go player, and uh, I have a background in that as well. And uh, I think he's a really, really good person, and I think he has extremely high integrity. And uh, maybe, honestly, like, I didn't go that deep. I read, like, some of the posts on 2 Plus 2 and talked to a couple people about it. But um, regardless if you agree with his decision or not, I, I can assure you that he was doing it because he thought it was the best thing uh, throughout his, or like through his morals, he thought it was morally the best decision that he could make. So he's not concerned with like pleasing the public or being this icon or famous poker star. And I think that's pretty admirable. He, if he, even if poker isn't a dark game or whatever it is that he called it, uh, he believes it is, and he stood behind his beliefs. And I think that that's that shows you somebody who has a strong backbone, and I respect that. And I will say, as crabby as I have been about it in general, in Monte Carlo, when he denied me for the interview, it was one of the nicest denials I've ever got. I have, like, varying degrees of being denied for interviews, yep. and I will say he was, he even apologized. I'm so sorry. I just don't believe in promoting poker. I know that's your job, but I'm really sorry. And I was like, okay, cool. But I think there was, by the time everything evolved in the one drop, there had been so much pressure put on him that it got a little bit uglier and a of little course. bit more aggressive. and. You yeah. know, which I understand. And mm -hmm. I hope he doesn't think we're always coming at it because I'm asking everyone this all the time, but it's just the buzz of the hour right now. For sure. We f she told me two minutes, like ten minutes ago, but we go, this guy's trying to work off a hangover, you know what I mean? I'm trying to help him out a little bit. Like making just our thought, own joke. Right? Oh, good. See, she says we can even answer one more. <laughs> Things are going up. Sometimes I can't tell if it goes down or up or it goes all it goes over up. the place. Yeah, see, sometimes, and then sometimes it goes all over the place. Okay, it's good now. But what I wanted to ask you about was something I saw on your Twitter that something happened at the Hertz uh, place yeah. when you went to rent a car, and I just wanted to get the whole story. You like that drama, don't you? Absolutely. That yeah. drama. Yeah, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Like, I've had two dramatic situations this year. I've never had, I don't think I've ever had dramatic situations like social media. It's been Hertz and the, the valet here. So that's my job. Yeah, well, okay, so I go play LAPC. 
and I was late for my flight, and I returned my car, and I uh, I returned like they they do the inspection, I drop it off, I run into like do the checkout, and then I realize I don't have my wallet. So I like sprint back to the guy vacuuming my car and doing the like sprinter. He was yeah, there fast. yeah, yeah. So I got there really fast. And I'm like, hey man, my wallet's in here. And he's like, no, it isn't. And I'm like, are you sure my wallet's not in here? And he's like, no, nah, it's not in here. And uh, and I was like, come on, man. Like, just give me my ID or something. Like, and he freaked out. He's like, well, you think uh, because I'm this or that that, you know, uh, I steal your wallet? And I was like, no, nah, I just think I left my wallet here. Um, well, long story short, I. Uh, like a month later, get an email from Hertz that I'm being billed for $2,000 for totaling the front two wheels on the car. And I was like, well, isn't that something that they would have noticed whenever I returned it? Completely totaled uh, wheels and tires. <laughs> How uh, convenient. Yeah, yeah. After having a fight with the guy that basically checks the car in. So uh, I DM them. I like blast them on Twitter. Then they ask me to follow them. And I DM the reference number. And I uh, talked to a couple people, and they're like, yeah, they're, this isn't legit, and canceled it. I don't have to pay anything. So be careful. Those guys are, uh, they can be some scumbags. And you never there. got your wallet? Uh, yes, I did. It was in the bottom of my backpack. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He didn't take that. Smited. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. It works on so many levels. Yeah. Well, there you go, folks. This has been a public service announcement. If you rent a car, do not start talking trash to the guy. That yeah, be it. very nice to them. That being said, if you do have a problem, just get on that social media and blast people. That's yeah. the only way to solve problems yeah. these days. Yeah. Well, this has been another Google Hangout. Potentially my favorite one because we actually got to chill. Jason Kuhn, Eric Danish, you guys are with us here on PokerNews.com. I've started saying dot com.